Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And if you couldn't tell, I am immensely excited for Apple's transition away from Intel processors to move over to their own custom made Apple Silicon chips. Not only am I excited about the possibilities of how these new computers will perform with Apple's own processors, but I'm just astounded by how quickly these computers will be showing up on our doorstep with the first Apple Silicon based Mac shipping out by the end of this year in 2020. And in particular, we are getting a lot of rumors about the future of Apple's MacBook lineup in regards to Apple Silicon. So for this video, let's go over everything we know about Apple's future plan for the MacBook lineup, including what updates we can expect this year and what updates we can expect for next year and some future designs Apple may have up their sleeves if you're willing to wait. So the first laptop we are expecting Apple to release by the end of this year with Apple Silicon is actually an update to the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Despite it receiving an update not too long ago, it looks like this will be the first Apple laptop to receive Apple Silicon, according to Apple supply chain analyst, Ming-Chi Kuo. Based on rumors, it looks like this 13 inch MacBook Pro will look pretty much the same as the previous iteration. So it will still come with the same 13.3 inch display, still have the same bezels around the display and still come with, you guessed it, four Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports and the new Magic Keyboard, which isn't bad. I would also assume because we are not expecting a redesign here that this Mac will still ship with a touch bar and touch ID sensor rather than what we all probably want at this point, which is face ID. Although I'm not expecting the face ID sensor to be on this latest Mac, I do eventually expect it to make its way to the entire MacBook lineup. So what's the update here? Well, the update, or I guess the focus of this MacBook Pro will apparently be just on the benefits of what Apple can do with their own custom Apple Silicon hardware now powering this laptop. I explained in a previous video that this would be a route that Apple might be likely to take to show off the first Macs running on their own hardware and not do any external design changes because they can make a clear distinction that the only real change in these laptops are just the chip transition and show off just by that alone how many real world benefits you will be getting from this transition. Without focusing on a new design, consumers can feel at ease knowing that the Mac laptops look and feel the same, and this will help anyone out there if they are scared about making any major changes with this new transition. This is a clear way to let consumers understand the real world benefits of the Apple Silicon transition and keeping it pretty familiar. These benefits will include fast performance in a processor that takes significantly less wattage to run compared to what Intel is currently shipping. In fact, Quo himself is predicting performance gains of anywhere from 50% to as much as 100% over what Intel processors are currently capable of. It's easy to look at what Apple is doing with the iPad Pro and imagining a processor that can easily be Intel's offerings, not only in performance, but with better management of thermals as well. Anyone who's used these recent Intel-based MacBook Pros knows just how much heat these chips can generate as well as how fast they can drain the battery. One of the biggest areas I actually expect to see with the MacBook Pro in terms of benefits is with the battery life, and I would expect gains of as much as five hours of additional battery life. Now, of course, we're talking about the entire Mac lineup here and what to expect for not only this year, but the next year as well as we get ready for this transition. And another Mac laptop that could be updated right alongside this Apple Silicon MacBook Pro is of course the MacBook Air. Again, according to Ming-Chi Kuo, Apple is getting ready to update the MacBook Air, which could, according to him, launch right alongside this new 13-inch MacBook Pro, or very early in 2021. If any computer is going to see massive benefits from the transition over to Apple Silicon, it's going to be the MacBook Air, which currently uses a much lower wattage Intel processor compared to what's offered in the MacBook Pro, but still comes with significant performance downgrades and still suffers from heat management and fan noise. 
even adjusting conservatively a MacBook Air with Apple Silicon would be just as powerful as the latest 2020 iPad Pro, and probably even more so. That performance in a thin and light body would be great, and just like the MacBook Pro, it would also lead to better thermal management and battery life. So far, we aren't expecting any sort of redesign or new features with this Apple Silicon-based MacBook Air, so expect it to look pretty much identical to the one we have now, However, I should also talk about this other Quo tidbit, especially with the MacBook Air story, and that is that Quo estimates that Apple will reduce processor costs by anywhere from 40 to 60% by transitioning over to Apple Silicon. That makes sense. They no longer have to pay Intel to make these processors, and by paying a third party, there's obviously more costs added to the individual components of the processor because Intel needs to make a profit. Apple doesn't on their processors. So if Apple is keeping the same design for both of these laptops and just adding Apple Silicon, it stands to reason that both of these laptops might actually end up getting cheaper, especially for the MacBook Air. Apple could reduce the price of this laptop by probably another $100 and start selling the entry-level model at around $899 compared to the $999 that it currently costs. Exploring this lineup further, there's also rumors that Apple is working on a reintroduction to the 12-inch MacBook. Currently, this 12-inch MacBook is rumored to be coming with Apple Silicon using a re-engineered short travel butterfly keyboard and could come in at an even lower cost than that MacBook Air of around $800. I recently did a dedicated video on this 12-inch MacBook rumor and talked about all the features, design, and why this MacBook could succeed while the previous 12-inch MacBook version failed. So if you want to check out that video, I will leave a link right up here. Now, while we aren't expecting major redesigns for these first upcoming Macs, I do expect to eventually see some sort of 5G networking capabilities now that Apple is moving over to a more mobile-friendly processor. So it stands to reason that all of these MacBooks could have 5G networking as one of their major features, and if this turns out to be true, these will be the first Mac laptops that have cellular access. Now, for the people who are tired of the same Apple laptop design and wanted a fresh your take on Apple's laptop lineup, well, don't give up hope just yet because you may not have to wait that much longer for these new redesigns because Quo is saying that yes, Apple plans to follow up this more tame and boring release with an eventual redesign of the 13-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pro. The 13-inch will be getting a serious bezel reduction in the display, which will allow Apple to put in a 14.1 inch display in around the same body size. In fact, we have some recent patent leaks from Apple that show just that, with dramatically reduced bezels that reduce the size of them even more than what Apple did with the 15 inch going to the 16 inch MacBook Pro. According to Quo, these 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros will have an all new form factor design. Based on this evidence from Quo and based on the evidence from these patent leaks, this suggests that these updates will be much more exciting, and like I've speculated before, with evidence backing it up in macOS Big Sur, this 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pro would probably also come with redesigned displays that have rounded corners, and based on code in macOS Big Sur, they are likely to finally be coming with Face ID rather than Touch ID. These displays won't just look different, but they should be much better quality as well, as Apple is rumored to be putting in mini LED displays into both the future 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pro. A mini LED display would lead to benefits like better contrast ratios, better brightness, and the ability to view HDR content. I also personally believe, although to be fair, we don't have solid evidence backing this up quite yet, that these could be the first Apple laptops with touchscreen displays. Yes, you didn't mishear me. I think Apple will be putting touchscreen displays on the Mac, as Big Sur looks to be a much more touch-friendly user interface than before, with user interface elements being more spaced out and looking a lot more friendlier for touch controls than they were in previous versions of Mac OS. And on top of that, you will be able to run any iPhone or iPad app on these Macs with Apple Silicon, I'm guessing that that means touch screens are coming. 
Now, if you're worried about waiting a long time for these redesigns to come out, well, there might be some hope because Quo expects that these new redesigns for the MacBook Pro for both the 14 inch and 16 inch will come out pretty soon after this 13 inch MacBook Pro and MacBook Air with Apple planning to release them at the earliest in the second half of 2021 or at a later date for quarter three of 2021. So if you really want a redesigned MacBook, which we're not expecting with the first versions of these, it looks like you won't have to wait too much longer. But anyway, so far that's all we know about Apple's future plans for their Apple Silicon MacBook lineup. Please let me know in the comments below, what do you think about all the rumored designs and features? And I probably shouldn't say this, but do you plan on getting the first versions of these if they're not redesigns or waiting longer for the redesigned version? If you found this video helpful, be sure to leave me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, well, make sure you're subscribed. If you're not waiting for an Apple Silicon based Mac and you need an Intel one, well, check out some of the affiliate links in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.